guys, welcome to another episode of Tool of the Week. This week we're going to take a look at a diagramming tool called Draw.io. So let me just go ahead and show you. So just open up a web browser and go to Draw.io and it'll immediately ask you where you want to keep your drawings. I'm just going to choose device because I want it saved on my computer. And then I'm going to choose create a new diagram. And here you have a bunch of templates for like software, uh, network diagrams, and flow charts and things like that. I usually just pick basic, blank diagram, click create. Quick side note, if you don't want to use it in the web browser, they do have a desktop app and there's a little shortcut for it right here. You just launch it and then you can download it for your desktop. But it's pretty convenient to use it through the web browser. So let's go through the basics now. On the left hand side you have all these shapes and they're categorized here and you just take a shape and drag it onto your canvas and then when you have a shape selected there's a bunch of properties that you can manipulate for that shape so just drag shapes on and then you can move the shape by just dragging them you can wrote uh, you can resize them by grabbing one of the handles on the edges in the corners and you can rotate them by grabbing this little rotate icon. Most of the shapes have a text, so if you just double click a shape, it's gonna put the cursor right there, and then you can type stuff. And if you select the shape and you go to the text tab, you can actually determine the position of the text relative to the shape. So right now, we have it centered horizontally and centered vertically. So we can actually, for example, put it on the left hand side vertically and we can, uh, or yeah, put it on the left hand side and then we can put it on the top like that or center, center. Another thing you can do is group things and I often do that. So let's say for some reason um, I'm going to re-rotate rotate this and put it right here and I want these two things to move together basically. So I just select them both, right click and then group. And now you see it just makes it so that there's one big box around both of them. And when you move one, you move the other. It's a very useful little thing. To ungroup, you just right click on a group and then click ungroup. Okay, now how to connect stuff. So I'm gonna move this guy here, move this guy here, and I want them to be connected. So there's a bunch of connectors here. There's a unidirectional, bidirectional, and no directional, I guess. So I'm going to drag this unidirectional connector. I'm going to take one end of it, mouse over until I see a blue highlight on that shape. And I'm going to let it go. And then I'm going to mouse it over until I see a blue highlight on this shape. And I'm going to let it go. So the reason why you want to do it until you see that blue highlight is because it means I want the connector to be attached to the border. That's what the blue highlight means. So I want the left side of this connector to be attached to the border of this shape and I want the right hand side of this connector to be attached to the border of this shape. So watch what happens when I move this shape down. You notice, look at the connector, it actually moves with it. Let me launch my uh, mouse highlighter so that you guys can see things better. Okay, there we go. Now I'll show you another type of connection. So let's go ahead and delete this connection, put a new one, and now I'm going to, if you kind of hold the mouse and move it within the shape, you notice that now the highlight is green. So green means I want to attach this side of the connection to that exact area. So watch, you see how the connection now went inside the shape and not on the border. So blue highlight means attached to the border. Green highlight means attach it exactly where I'm specifying. So for this one, I'll still put it on the border. See blue highlight border and green highlight meant exactly there. So watch, now when I move this shape, you notice that the arrow side will still uh, slide around in the border of this shape, but notice that the uh, green highlighted uh, area, that, that area, that side of the connection that was highlighted in green, that's static, that's fixed. What I normally do is I don't really do the green one, I just do the blue one. So again, for me to make connections, I just drag one in, I take the, this one end, move it over until I see a blue highlight, 
take the other end, move it over until I see a blue highlight. That means I'm connecting the borders, the border of this shape with the border of that shape. So once again, watch what happens as I move. You notice that the line up here keeps sliding and the line here keeps sliding. Okay, so I'll show you a real quick shortcut now. If you just mouse over a shape, you'll see those arrows at the edges, right? So that just means, watch what'll happen if I just click that arrow. It basically copies that shape in the direction and then it creates a connection for you. So again, I mouse over this and there's an arrow, I just click it and it creates a connection and a copy of my shape. So if I do it over this shape, see, creates a copy of that and I go left. So this is very useful for creating uh, you know, complex diagrams very quickly. Another thing you notice that as I put a new uh, shape on the edge of my border, see, another page comes in to cover that. And if you just want to get rid of the page, just make sure you have nothing selected. So just click in an empty area and then uncheck page view. And that'll make it so that you have an unlimited space basically. So I like keeping the page view because I generally want to constrain things to a page. We also have some tools for aligning and arranging. So let's create a few texts. So I'm gonna create a text here. I'm gonna select it, Control C, Control V to copy it. So you can see it already kind of gives me those little helper guides, right? But let's say I wanna make these evenly spaced, right? So I select them all. Then I go to the Arrange tab here. And then I basically, let's say that I want to make sure that these things are aligned on a horizontal line. So you see that I want to, if I click this button, it will make sure that the tops of all of these things are aligned. So let's make sure that they're misaligned, select them, and then watch what happens to this misaligned one. There we go. Then there's also distributing. So, so to distribute, you have either horizontally or vertically. So here we want to distribute them horizontally and it creates an even space between each of them. Those two features, aligning and distributing, are very useful. So let's do one more practice. Let's say that we have our shapes, oops, kind of laid out in a rough vertical orientation and we want them all to be aligned, right? So we select them, we go to the range tab, and let's say we want all their centers to be aligned on the line, right? So then we just click this one. And there we go, they're all aligned. And let's also say that we want them to be distributed. Make sure they're selected, arrange tab. And now we want to distribute them vertically. And there you go. Once you've created your fancy diagram, you can you have several export options. So just go to file and then export as. And you can save it as an image, a PNG, JPEG, or a scalable vector graphics, or a PDF. You can also export it as an HTML. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it as a PNG. And here you have some options, how much you want it to be zoomed. I usually leave that at 100%. And you can also, if you have a, a selection, you can only export your selection. You don't have to export your whole diagram, but I'm going to export my whole diagram. Additionally, you can check whether you want the grid to appear in your export. I usually don't include that. And here's a little cool thing. You can actually include a copy of your diagram in the metadata of most of the files. So not all the files have this, but most of them do. So that way you can open that file again with the draw.io and then you can edit it. That's kind of cool. So let me go ahead and just export this. And I'm gonna just save it in my device. And here you can name it. I'm gonna go ahead and name it diagram one and I'm gonna export it on my device. There you go, just puts it right over here and I can open that up using photos. And here's my exported diagram. Oh, and another quick little thing about exporting, you can actually export these as a VSDX file. So then it can be opened uh, in Visio. One of the things that I use this program a lot for is creating class diagrams. So if you wanna create a class diagram on the left-hand side here, go to the UML section and then you have some shapes that you can use. So if you, have you, as you have probably noticed, if you mouse over the shapes, you get a little preview of them right off to the right-hand side. So um, here we're just gonna choose a class 
you have a few different styles. Uh, I usually just like to pick this one, or you can pick this one, doesn't matter. I guess I'll try a different one this time. So we'll pick this one, and you can see it's kind of cool because it has a little collapse already. So I can name this class Entity, just double click on the text to edit it. Double click on this text to edit the field. So we'll say that the entity has a uh, position, and that is of type vector2, which is of type double. So we got an entity here, and then it, we, you can use that shortcut to uh, mouse over it, right? And then press that arrow, and it'll create a clone of it. So you can, and then you can change up the connector. So, so you have all these connectors for composition, right? So if you want an entity to have another entity, then I can say, all right, um, this entity will have this entity right there. And let's see, as we move this around, you notice that the connector is kind of bendy, right? <laughs> so I've just termed out a bendy connector. If you click it, um, go to the style, and right over here, you can see that it's a bendy correct connector. Now that's not what its actual name is, I just call it that. Sometimes you don't want that, you want a straight connector, so choose this one. Actually, I often use the straight connector, see? I kind of like how that looks better. They also have an interface shape, so if you just want an interface, you know, um, and I'm not gonna be so creative here, I'm just gonna call it my interface. So we want them to inherit from my interface, there's an inheritance, so an implementation. So, you know, an implementation and an inheritance arrow are really the same thing, so we're gonna say that an entity is an implementation of the my interface. There we go. Another thing that I use this diagramming tool for is sequence diagrams. So let's delete that. That's also, I believe, in the UML section. Yes, it is. So here they are. Um, so there's an actor lifeline. And there's an entity lifeline. So and an object lifeline. So I'm just gonna use the object lifeline. I'm gonna say that this is the, um, well, we'll say this is the world, or this is the car interacting with the, um, we'll get rid of this actor. So the car interacting with the um, driver, I don't know. Just making this stuff up. I didn't really plan it too well. So now we have messages here. So here's a message. We'll just kind of put it right here. Drag one end until you see the blue highlight. Release it, that's connected now. Drag the other end until you see a blue highlight again. And that'll be connected again. And then I believe you can click these and then drag them up. Yep, there you go. Pretty nice. So that sends a message to it. Then maybe it just immediately sends another message. And maybe this guy will send a message back. So let's um, copy this. And then you can right click. Here's a neat little trick. Right click the arrow. And then there's a reverse option. So that'll just flip it. So now the arrow is pointing to the left. Select it. And we'll say that this guy sends another message. And let's just name these messages. So just double click the text to edit it. So we'll say hello i don't know why the car is telling the driver hello right then the driver says what up so mainly that's what i use them for um i use this uh, diagramming tool to make class diagrams and entity diagrams and block diagrams for the block diagrams you can just go to the general section and just use these containers really you don't need much else you just need boxes for those for the sequence diagrams and the class diagrams, just go to the UML section. So one other thing that I use this is to create user interface mockups. So let's go do that real quick. So the shapes uh, for a user interface mockup, uh, they're not the default shapes here. They're not part of the default shapes. So you'll have to create, uh, click this more shapes button and then you'll have to check and uncheck some of these. So the checked ones are what appears on the left hand side here and the unchecked ones do not appear. 
So let's look for the mockups. Look for the mockups and then check that and click apply. And that will actually bring a few sections here. So um, I usually go to the containers and here you have a video player. So if you want to mock up some type of a video player or include a video player in your greater mockup, you have um, some control elements. And here is even a browser. So if you're mocking up a website, you know, you can put a browser there and you can say that your website has a little video player right here. And maybe it has some text over here. My vid, we'll drag that right here. And then let's make this text a little bit bigger. So go, click on text and here's the font. We'll make it 20. There we go. Let's see what else we got here. So we have a generic window. So if we were creating an application that wasn't a you know web app or a website, then you can mock it up here. Uh, you have things like accordion selections. And then you have even a dialog box here. And of course you can just double click on this message. Say you did something bad. And you can modify the title, whatever you want. You know, and if you go to the uh, mockup forms container or, or section over here, then you get a bunch of forms like checkboxes, um, multi checkboxes, uh, radio buttons. So you can put a couple of those. Uh, let's put one more of them right here. And then let's say that we're not super precise with laying them out and we want to align them, you just click them. Go to the Arrange tab and we want to align them by their left hand side. There we go. And we want to also distribute them evenly vertically. So we will do a, a vertical distribution. And there we go. So again, make sure you see that clearly they're not distributed. I select them and I do a vertical distribution. Now they are. Another cool thing is, is you have some mock-up text. So in this section, um, <laughs> you just have this generic text that it includes. So if you want, you know, as part of your website, um, you want to put a video here, the title here, and some text on the right hand side, there it is. And of course, you can go to the text tab to increase or decrease this font size. And you can also, you know, edit it to get rid of, um, so to get rid of some of the text like this. There we go. And that's basically all that I use it for. I just use it for class diagrams, sequence diagrams, and user interface mockups. Um, but it's a cool little free alternative to Visio. And as I said, it actually exports to Visio. Um, it's always available because anywhere that you have a, a web browser and an internet access, you can just go to draw.io to get it. And you can also download a desktop version for when you don't have internet access. I think it's a pretty cool little program for, again, doing class diagrams, sequence diagrams, and mockups. But you can do any type of diagramming or drawing. They have um, a lot of engineering diagrams uh, like circuit, um, you know, circuit specifications. I forget what they call them, like circuit diagrams and things like that. So it's more than just software, but of course, I mainly use it just for software. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something and hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye-bye.